All right, China. This is the entry to China. This is called the Kundra Pass. Uh, this is a famous pass. It's the highest. Yeah, 4,700 or 600 meters highest border crossing in the world. Yeah, we are. So um, now we'll just quickly, we have to do something slightly sneaky, which we'll show you right now. So we have to try to smuggle our drone into China. Yeah, and if you've been watching any of our videos, you'll see that we use the drone all the time and they get some amazing footage. Yeah, I mean, this is actually our second one. That's a long story. We, 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 had, a, that. we had an issue. So uh, a number of the countries we're going through, the first one being China, doesn't actually allow you to take drones into the country. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing being that um, it's actually made in China. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you actually... Boom. Made in China. So yeah, it's made in China, you can buy them in China, you just can't go over a border carrying them. So, we've heard reports of people, uh, they're getting confiscated or actually they snap and break them right in front of you. Which would be bad, because it does cost a it's stupid amount of money. Yeah. Um, so, we have a plan. Yeah, we know it's not ideal and some people might give us some flack over it, but we're going to take the risk and we're going to try to sneak it into China. Yeah, of course. I mean, people will be like, oh, it's illegal. And I guess technically it is illegal, but it's a $2,000 drone and we have we have two options. We either leave it behind. It's not an option. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just not an option. Or we sneak it into the country. And we will respect the law to the extent that we won't use it while we're in China. So we'll do that, but we just don't want to give it away, obviously, or go to Kyrgyzstan or these other countries without it. So. Yeah, we've actually been really good. We do not fly drones in no drone zones. We, just, we don't do it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we do want to take this into China. This is how this we're going to do it. <laughs> you know that the border, they're going to go through all of our luggage. So putting it in our bags or anything like that just really wasn't an option. So we started looking around the bike and where we could hide it. We, you know, thought under the wheel well. We started thinking about in the tool tube, but they can open that. None of these are good ideas. So we came up with the only place we think that they won't look, which is right here. The air box. So this is the air box on the DR650. And this is the air filter, which is meant to remain in the airbox and filter out any of the dust and dirt you can see we've got on ours from the last few days. Yeah. This is actually a stupid idea for many reasons. First reason being we're taking the air filter out. So that's just a bad idea in general. We're not going a long distance, but it's okay. But the other thing is this is a carbureted bike. And what happens with these, unless you have the right jet in it, when you get to an altitude, they just starve of air. And we're gonna be at about, I think 4,600 meters. Yeah. So these bikes, without us messing around with the air, air box, are gonna struggle. And now we're taking the air filter out and shoving things inside the air box. We actually don't know if this will work. But we're gonna give it a go. We don't have another option. Mm. What we're going to do though, like I said, we're removing the air filter and we are gonna try at least cover the big hole in there going through to the engine. And we found a um, tattoo sleeve, which um, may That's or great. may not work, but at least it will filter out some dust and you know, it's pretty thin, so it will let air through. Yeah, but that's also, our theory. Main, the, the best thing is, it's a kiss. It's a kiss. It's yeah. a kiss tattoo sleeve. And very realistic. We, yeah. We've worn them. People thought they were real. All right, so we have worked this out. Battery has to come off. We fold this all up, and it does just, just. fit into the airbox. Um, whether this will work on your bike, who knows? The good, I mean, the lucky thing for us is that there are two of us. So what's gonna happen is James is gonna take the drone and we've got three batteries and a controller. So uh, those will go into my air filter. So both of our bikes will probably run shit. Yeah. yeah. And I think they will run shit anyway, given the altitude we're going to. So we're just really making it worse. They run, more, they run even more shit. But shit running bikes. We're not in a rush and hopefully we'll, well, we'll let you know. So we covered the drone in plastic. James shoved it into his air box. Meanwhile, I shoved the, uh, the three batteries and the controller into mine. And off we went. Okay, so now you know what's going on. To be completely honest, the bikes weren't horrible. No. They're not great, like we pretty we much made rode, it. We rode up in third gear the whole way up. But from here, it's all downhill. Mm. Well, we, on the road. The problem is they still haven't checked anything. Yeah. So uh, we're still, still keeping our fingers crossed. It's not actually open yet either, so we yeah, have we to waiting. wait around a while. But we did meet some friends. These guys, they have a company called Dragoman. They're actually got an empty, empty truck at the moment, but they're going into China to pick up a whole bunch of tourists that uh, they do these like adventure travels in these big trucks. But it's good for us now because we've got nothing to do and we can go sit on a warm My truck. My hands are turning blue, so yeah. we get to go on a warm truck. So we're going to go do that uh, and then we'll fill you in, hopefully, when we're successful. Hopefully we get through. Okay, so here's China. Massive country. 
But all we're trying to do is go from the Pakistan border over here to the Kyrgyzstan border over here. Now, it should be easy, but it is so not. So even though it is a relatively short distance, you cannot drive your own vehicle into this part of China without a guide. Very similar to the situation we faced in Myanmar. The only difference is this one is very expensive and their border control is very strict and they go through everything with a fine tooth comb, hence us trying to hide the drone in our motorbikes. So we went with a company called Kashgar New Land International Travel Service. There were a few different options, but the cheapest one was a four day trip. Day one was from the Pakistan border to Tashkurgan. Day two is Tashkurgan to Kashgar. And then day three, you actually have a, a day off in Kashgar. And then the last day is from Kashgar to the Kyrgyzstan border. Originally, they quoted us 1400 US each if it was going to be just the two of us. But we managed to join a group, so we negotiated it down to 1100 US. But this is still insanely expensive, seeing as in Pakistan, we averaged under 20 US dollars a day. Okay, so it's actually sort of snowing up at the pass, which is kind of cool. Um, and we've been told to go through this building. They don't actually do anything here. We keep going to find a blue building where they do all the crazy stuff. That sounds weird. They just check your bags. It's probably worth mentioning for the first time in the entire trip, we have lost some of our footage, probably from trying to hide it from the Chinese authorities. We can't seem to find any of the footage from our main camera. So from here on out, uh, it's just GoPro, but it's still great. You're, you're gonna love it. Anyway, here's the blue building I was just talking about. This is where the fun starts. We had to completely empty out our bags, all our tools, clothes, camping gear, everything, and lay it out on the floor for them to inspect. Then you take your bike to be x-rayed. This is actually James coming back from the x-ray and he's about to start repacking. Then I shit you not, you ride to the other side of the building and they make you take all your stuff out again for another inspection. Because apparently they are a different department and they have nothing to do with the first department that did the first inspection. It is, it's, it, it, honestly, it's very hard to make sense of it all. Uh, we were also absolutely shitting ourselves that the x-ray was gonna find the drone. But somehow we got through. That whole process took three and a half hours. It's also worth mentioning that we still haven't met our guide. They don't help you through this process at all. We are, we are now following a police escort to Tashkurgan. We've got a dog chasing you. <laughs> um, okay, so we, uh, we made it through, which is good. It was pretty tricky. We'll uh, <laughs> get, to ta we get down to Tashkurgan and we'll tell you what happened. Yeah, the long one, but we're through now, and hopefully, uh, that's good. We've got a famous little convoy we're in now. I'm stuck by a very smelly diesel truck, but the uh, weather's good and the mountains look great, so it should be too bad. Okay, so this is us arriving at Tashkurgan for the next bit of fun. Firstly, they weigh your bike. Then you have to take all your bags, including the panniers, inside the building to be x-rayed. Okay, and these two guys here, these are our guides. And this guy, he is Charlie. Him and his wife, Cecilia, are they, they're from Singapore and they are traveling around the world on their BMW. They are such a lovely couple and we ended up actually sticking with them for, for I think a good week or maybe more. So you'll see a bit of them. So we've, we've now gone through the whole process. We've x-rayed our bags, they've checked our passports, we've gone through customs, we've done it all. We're literally just waiting for someone to give us the, the tick that we can leave. We waited all afternoon and eventually they told us that they were closing. So we had to actually lock our bikes in their parking lot because they wouldn't let us take it. And then we caught a taxi to our hotel where we spent the night. The next morning we went there and we, I think it was like six or seven hours where we just sat around until way after lunch for them to finally go, yep, you can leave it, again. So this whole thing took what, a day and a half to get through customs. It's a crazy process.
So we are now slowly making our way to Kashgar, where we spent all of the next day being tourists. It's quite an amazing city and I wish we had footage to show you, but we basically checked out Old Town and James tried on some hats. Then the next morning, we pressed on to the Kyrgyz border. It was all kind of highways at first, nothing really exciting, but then just to keep us on our toes, another police check. Where they went through all our bags again, same old process. Anyway, we got back on the open road, but not for too long, because then we got to this warehouse where we had to x-ray our bikes again. And somehow, somehow, they still haven't found the drone, which is quite a miracle. Then we had to go into this building where they went through all our stuff again. This time they take your phone, your camera and your laptop if you have one and they go through every photo and every video and they make you delete everything that they deem inappropriate. Basically any military photos or any photos of the Chinese flag. All of this took the best part of the morning. But eventually we got out of the cities and into some beautiful landscapes again. But then out of nowhere, another warehouse popped up where more fun and exciting things happen. And fortunately, we got there just as they were going on their lunch break. Two hour lunch break. So now we just wait. Yep, we just wait. We did lots of waiting. Yeah. Look at it, it's like a ghost town. We're having coffee. Coffee. Biscuits and dry apricots. Nice. Very really good. How do you feel about China, James? Just tired. Yeah. It's all right, but it's just it's just tiring and draining because nothing ever happens. You just sit. Get away from me. So after four days of basically having our bags just checked every few hundred meters, we are finally at the border of Kyrgyzstan. And we are finally free to go through. Shishé! <laughs> Bye. Jay, stop! Oh, you got to be kidding me. Okay, so we're now in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, thanks for coming along on that bizarre ride with us. So the shortest time we've ever spent in a country on this trip, only four days, but without doubt, the most expensive. I'll put all the budgetary stuff here, but also unavoidable. We're we had to come through here to get to Kyrgyzstan, which is where we are now, which is where the next video is, uh, which is mind blowing. You will love it. So if you can, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us and you'll get a notification as soon as that next video comes up because it's going to be a cracker. See you soon.